Hi, welcome to another episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. I'm your host, Marek Mularczyk, and welcome to another week, another exciting episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. A weekly video podcast about anything Photoshop, Lightroom, and Adobe Watch, and photography, of course, as well. I've got some exciting news for you. This week, Adobe has announced Creative Suite 5.5. Yeah, yeah, we got a new Creative Suite 5.5. It looks like we're not going to have CS6 this year. <coughs> well, you never know. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep you updated. What we do have is CS5.5 with some nice updates within some of the Adobe applications, not within Photoshop. Well, nothing within Lightroom because Lightroom is not a part of Creative Suite. And there are no plans for that, as far as I know. But there are some great improvements in Flash and in Design and other applications. To find out more, go to photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk and I have a post about Creative Suite 5.5. So once again it's photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk. Have a look on that and see more information. That was another great new feature I would say in Creative Suite 5.5. Adobe has announced new subscription based subscription for Creative Suite products. What it basically means is that you can buy Photoshop, for example, as a subscription. So instead of paying the full price, at the moment this would be roughly £700 in the UK or about $700 in the States, you can pay a subscription, monthly subscription of about, I think it's $35. So it comes out really good value because in two years time you pay the same amount you would normally pay for Photoshop. You can, there's lots of products to choose from. You can buy, you can subscribe to some of the licenses for Photoshop and the other products, or Creative Suite as well, Creative Suite Design Premium or Vasta Collection as well. Have a look on PhotoshopLightroom.co.uk. There's a link to Adobe website where you can find out more about subscriptions. Okay, let's move on. I've got a tutorial in Photoshop for you. Later on, we'll be talking about the contest from last week, but let's jump into Photoshop, and I'm going to show you an exciting feature called Zoomify that can be used to put high resolution images online. Let's have a look at it. Let's jump into Photoshop. Hi, here I am in the site Adobe Photoshop. I'm Marek Mularczyk from SciTraining.co.uk, one of the UK's leading specialists in Adobe Certified Training. And I'm going to show you how to use powerful Zoomify feature to quickly export high resolution images and put them on the web. And this is a high resolution image. If I just go to image, image size, I'll show you this image is 300 dpi and it's 5000 by 3500 pixels. So this is a high resolution image. I'm just going to cancel it. I'm going to put it online using the Zoomify feature. So I'll go to File, Export, and Zoomify. What Zoomify does is it uses Flash technology and it creates a browser window and it defines size. So for example, I'm going to make it 600 by 400 pixels. You can make it any size you want. I'm going to output it to a folder onto my desktop. Okay. And I will call it, let's say, do, 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 index as an example. Quality, I'm going to lower that to 10, which is still a maximum quality, but a smaller file size. Optimize tables, yes, and I want to open it in a web browser. What's going to happen is Photoshop is going to slice the image into loads, literally hundreds of little tiles, and then output it into a Flash previewer on the web. So I'm going to press OK, and it will open my web browser when it's done as well. And now Photoshop is slicing the image into hundreds. I think that's about 400 of slices. I will put them in two separate folders and these little slices will load into a browser when needed. So you don't have to load everything at the same time. So this is the image. This is the overall view of the image. But you can zoom in and zoom out. So I'm going to zoom into 100% view, this 100% view, and now the image is starting to load. Now when I start panning around, that's where different slices will start loading. And these are the slices. So I can say, hey, uh, uh, let's move it down. 
Okay, let's let's start loading. That's how you use Zoomify in Photoshop CS5. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the second part of this video tutorial, <laughs> Marek Mulacic once again. I just wanted to show you what happened behind the scenes when Photoshop generated the Zoomify uh, feature. So let's go. In, let's have a look on the desktop. I'm just going to minimize Photoshop for now. Okay. And what we had here is the HTML file and a folder with images. Okay. This is the page that opens in the web browser. So if I double click on it, it loads into a web browser. Okay. I'm just going to close that. And then we have the images folder with two subfolders, tile group 0, tile group 1. And in the first group, we have loads of slices. So it's 256 slices in here. These are all slices of a 100% view of the image. And the images are about 40, 37 kilobytes each. So they load really quickly. And then we have another group with another set of images. And again, the all 100% views and in about 20 to 40 kilobytes each. So what you need to do now is go and upload these two files or this file and this folder online and then you have the page up and running with a high resolution version of your image online. That's how you create it quickly and easily with Photoshop. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial in Photoshop, showing you how to use Zoomify feature to put high resolution images online. Okay, now let's have a look at another tutorial. This time we'll jump into Lightroom. But for a moment, let's talk about the contest we had last week. So last week in a contest, I asked you about a keyboard shortcut to quickly access Painter tool in Lightroom. And this keyboard shortcut was Control Alt. Okay, that's the answer. I was looking for. To find out if you won the book and a DVD, go to photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk and there will be a post about this week's episode and about the last week's contest. Okay. Now let's jump into Photoshop into Lightroom, Photoshop Lightroom. Uh, let me show you some more features about Painter Tool, how to use Painter Tool, what we use it for. This is a really exciting tool in Lightroom. So let's see what Painter Tool can do. Let's jump into Lightroom together. Welcome to this tutorial, this time in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. I'm Marek Mulaucic and let's see what Painter tool does and how it works. Okay. So here I am inside Lightroom and I've got some test images that I'm working on. I'm going to show you what the Paint tool does. And you can find the Paint tool here, Painter tool, here in your library module. Okay. If I just navigate to Develop module, for example, different module than library here in Lightroom, the Painter tool will disappear. Okay. The Painter tool is gone here within the develop module. So I'm going to jump back to the library module to access Painter tool and I'll show you what Painter tool can create, what kind of effects. For example, we can use Painter tool to apply different effects so I'm going to click on the tool first, and then what do you want to paint with? You can paint with rotation, or keywords, or rating, or flags. Let's say I want to rotate the images. So I'll select the rotation, then I can rotate them either clockwise or counterclockwise, or even flip them. And then what you do is you just click on the image, and it will rotate, just like that. Or you can click and drag to rotate a number of images at the same time. I'm just going to undo that, so I'm going to change the rotate left. I'll just click and drag. Okay, and click and drag here, and this done. Let's see what else we can do. Let's paint with label. Oh, you can choose colors, or actually uh, rating. And I'm going to do four stars. So I'm going to take one star. And this will get four stars. It's a set rating of oh, three. I want four. It's got a number four on it, on the paint, actual painter, if you look on it. Uh, maybe these two as well. And if I scroll down, this will get four stars, and one here, and maybe that one here. That's how you can quickly and easily use Paint Tool to apply right into the images. Once you've done, you just click Done. I'm just going to double check that everything is applied, so I'm going to select one of the images, this one for example. 
and I can see there are four stars here directly below the image thumbnail at the bottom of the Lightroom interface. So that's how you use Paint tool effectively within Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching this tutorial and back to the studio. Welcome back, welcome once again. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial in Lightroom. I am once again a Marek Mulacic from SciTraining.co.uk, one of the UK's leading specialists in Adobe Certified Training. We're almost done for this week's uh, episode. I just want to share a few more information with you. Remember to have a look at my blog, Photoshop Lightroom Bridge.co.uk. That's where you find all the information about anything that's latest in technology, Adobe technology. Also, all the latest info from Adobe, like the this week's announcement of Photoshop of Creative Suite 5.5. Now it's time for a tip of the week. This tip of the week will be in Photoshop. This will be keyboard shortcut. Let's say you've added your text and you still have a text tool selected. You can quickly access the Move tool to move your text around by pressing or holding Control key on a keyboard, or this will be Command on a Mac. If you hold the Control or Command key and then add an Alt key to it, you can create a duplicate of this layer at the same time. And there's one more. If you also hold the Shift key on a keyboard, you'll be able to move it in a straight line. I hope you enjoyed this tip. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, this week episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. I'm Mark Mulacic and thank you for watching and have a lovely week. Thank you. Bye bye.